Welcome to Double Barrel Non-Duality. We do this once a month. Uh, we mix it up and have a different guest here every month. And then this is recorded, put on live, um, not live, excuse me, put publicly on the channel uh, once we're done. But this is an opportunity for anyone to ask questions and interact directly with uh, someone who has gone through this unbinding process and works with others who are also going through it. So when we do double barrel non-duality, we essentially take turns or we just kind of tag team or one of us may feel more inclined to answer a certain question. The other one may or may not. So uh, it's pretty organic. It seems to work out just fine. And then, um, yeah, we'll just have uh, people raise their hands. And again, you do that by clicking on the reactions button at the bottom. Up arrow should allow you to raise your hand. So I'm going to introduce our guest um, facilitator today, and it is Padilla. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Did I, did I pronounce your first name right? No. Okay. I, I knew I was going to screw it up. Sorry. It's Penilla, but it's completely fine. It's completely fine. And I know you're talking about me, so it's completely fine. You got my... <laughs> um, so um, she's uh, here with us. Uh, she's your front. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm I'm from Denmark. Um, so, yeah, I'm Danish, but I'm in the U.S. at the moment. Um, I'm working... Uh, at the moment, I'm working on creating um, the Awakening curriculum on my YouTube channel, which is... Um, a process that is taking you through the the ten fetters. I'm, I've been practicing Buddhism always, and it was uh, through Buddhism that I got in contact with the fetter model, and yeah, and, and that's what I'm working with. And the fetters are are basically um, ten different ways that we identify that we hook on into a, someone being here and someone being in the right and. Um, and the FEDA model is, is just a tool that is helping you to de-identify on the different levels. Very good. Thank you so much. And just so uh, anyone here listening um, knows, you don't have to know anything about the FEDERS or FEDER model. She will no. be completely able to um, to kind of meet you where you are with whatever's going on with you in this process. So Absolutely. let's get rolling. Okay. So if anyone wants to put their hands up, hit it, and we will just go down the line. Usually we have 15 hands up by now. There we go. Uh, Lubena. Hi, Angela. Hello. Hi. Um, so the, the question, I have, I have um, two questions. So what's been coming up for me is tapping into that, that sense of there's something wrong. Right. And that sense that there's something wrong is always present. And can, can you hear me? I can. Am I frozen? Okay. All right. I'm frozen. So I'm listening. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, so there's, there's that, that, that sense that there's something wrong. And just, when I get closer and closer to that feeling, it's like there's there's not just something's wrong out here, there's something wrong here in me. And then if I go closer, then it just turns into this like like a heart aching pain, right? And the reason I'm saying heart aching pain is because it's showing up in the heart, like in the center of my chest. And when I really stay with that, I don't know how to describe what comes up there, except that it's really hard just to stay there. Okay. Um, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> I would love to start. We, you and I work very different. Um, I'm very much Lubiana. I'm, I'm very much working, um, uh, Lubaina. Sorry, I pronounced your name wrong. Um, okay. I would, if you're up for it, I would like to, to work with you, uh, about it. Would that be okay? Because yeah. I, the, the thing is when we have this idea that there's something wrong 
with me or there's something wrong with this or the situation is wrong, then we have, obviously, that's a thought. That's an idea that there's something wrong. And it's, it's kind of like a diversion from what is actually going on. So we we have this split between the sensory experience of, of what is actually going on and then we have a thought about that that sensory experience that we have. So there's like a split that is happening. And and the reason why we can stay in it over and over and over and forever and forever and forever is that we keep looking at at the thought about it instead of actually staying with what is what is happening. So you've done beautiful work when you go into it and you can feel it, that something is happening in your chest. There's a contraction in the chest. But but where the diversion or the ego pops its head in is when you then put a thought to to describe what is happening in your chest instead of just creating space with, for it. Um, and a lot of the things that is happening in our body, we can't describe with words. It's beyond words. It, and all we need to do is just to create space for what is actually happening. So would, would you mind if we look into it? Sure, yeah. Okay. So if you if you sit right now and you just describe, if you look, go into that feeling um, of of you being wrong or something being wrong, can you tell me what's going on? I, I I don't really know how to say it. It's like this something's like wanting to grab attention. Mm. Something's trying to grasp at something. That's that's the best I can describe it. Okay. Can 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 you be with that where there's that wanting to grasp but not really accommodating it? Can you sit with a with a with a bodily sensation where there's something that wants to grasp at something and not grasp. It's kind of like, you know, like a cloud coming and making a shadow on the lawn and not making it into a deep hole on the lawn and creating a story about this the the hole in the lawn and but just allowing it to pass again. So it's just a shadow on the lawn and then the shadow passes again. Can can you just sit with that grasping? Yeah. So if you just sit with that grasping, then what what is happening in the body right now? Um, a cool feeling of contraction comes in from like chest to belly, but especially in the belly, it's like beautiful, really good. Stay with that, and then notice when you sit with it that your mind really wants to attach an explanation or a story why it's in the chest or why it's in the stomach. But just sit with that sensation in the stomach and in the chest and then start to notice if if you can if you can feel that it's not static, it's moving. It's not a static knot in the stomach and a static knot in the chest. There's something happening. There's a movement in it. But you need to, every time a thought comes in and want to explain why you have it in your chest or why you have it in the stomach and what it's about, just put that thought aside and just stay with the sensory experience in your body right now. Yeah, the sensations then start to spread and then it's like whole body awareness and then the environment comes in. Like and what? there's this... Um, when you say environment comes in... Feeling of... Yeah. As in, I, I feel like I'm I'm melting, like I'm sitting on the grass right now and it's like hard to distinguish what is grass and body. Yes. That feeling of being wrong, is it still there? No, no, there's just emotion coming up. 
And what emotion is that? It's really joy, but I want to cry. Yeah, it can be both. And, and again, not understanding why we want the body is crying and are laughing at the same time. That's just, you know, a frontal lobe issue. We want to understand and create a story. But if you're just right now with the experience that it's crying and laughing and joy at the same time, can you be in a body where that is available right now? Yeah. So what happened to the feeling of being wrong? I really feel that. Anymore. It's, it's, yeah. And the reason is that there is no such feeling. A feeling of being wrong, it's a physical sensation, and then there's a thought attached to it. And that's why we can stay in it forever and ever and ever, because when we keep attaching a thought and the same thought and the same thought and the same thought, then it's just a re renewal of the thought. It's not really exploring into the sensory experience of what it actually is. Yeah. Keep going with it. Keep going with where you are right, right now, where you can, because you're really good at detaching the thought and just said, stay, staying with that sensory experience. Keep going with that. Keep exploring um, that, that space you are in, where you are in your direct experience in your body, what is happening. And that is moving around all the time. And then just notice the assumptions and the thoughts that are coming up and keep, you know, detaching from it. It's just, it's just a cloud on the lawn. <laughs> you know, it's just a shadow on the lawn. You don't, it, it's not truth. It's just a thought, just like a s sense of smell, smell you smell. It's, it's just a smell. A thought is just a thought. There's nothing more to it. So keep separating between the sensory experience in your body, what's actually happening right now in your present moment right now, what is actually happening. And then detach the thought and keep going back to that again and again and again. And then you will, you will start to feel that there's a, um, a, dis a dissolving and a movement happening at the same time. That is way beyond anything you, you can explain with words. It's just, it's just that um, aliveness in the moment. And when we are there, we can tackle anything. So keep keep exploring that. I, I would love to hear how you're going about it. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. I have nothing to add. Wonderful. Anyone listening can do this with any complex with any uh, yeah, uh, exactly. sensation. You know, it's it's really um, this isn't that complicated. <laughs> Not at all. But, but the willingness to keep going back is is key. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, we have Ashley. Hi, how's it going? Hey. Just make sure my noise cancellation isn't off <laughs> or isn't on, I guess. Um, yeah, great. Thank you. Um, so my question today, it kind of follows on Lubina's stuff. I've been dealing with a lot of that emotional energy in the chest and the stomach as well and I guess I kind of more have a question about managing this more in everyday life in particular so like I haven't really been asked about it from people around me but I guess my question is how do you know how deep to go when someone is curious about maybe why you're experiencing emotions or maybe acting a little bit different maybe I guess is my question, like how deep should I share? Because this stuff can be very destabilizing and like they're able to tell because we work quite closely. But like I said, it hasn't come up yet and I'm sure I'd be able to handle it in the moment, but it's just, I wanted kind of a little bit of your insights on it. Yeah. I mean, I, I can say a bit about that because for me, 
I, I didn't share it for so long, but I also never felt like I was hiding anything. I just had an instinct about the fact that at least some aspects of deeper stage realization, a lot of people don't necessarily want to know. They don't necessarily mm-hmm. want that information, that in, that experience actually. But but it doesn't mean that people don't want peace. It's just they're kind of going about it the wrong way in a lot of ways. So uh, to, to summarize, I would just say there's an instinct um, from, from my experience. There's an instinct on when it's relevant, when it's not. When it's relevant to talk in a deep, more direct way and when it's not. Um, and I've learned to very much trust that, especially now that I do this publicly and so forth. Um, but it, but I don't want to um, minimize the fact that it can be tricky with people you're close to, you know, mm-hmm. because it can actually be de- destabilizing and it doesn't mean that everybody's ready for this necessarily. So um, I wish I could give you a magic formula that says this is how anyone you're emotionally close to how you how you can interact with them in a way that doesn't kind of freak them out or destabilize them sometimes i don't have that because it's it's really organic and it it shifts and changes all the time like everything does so um this does have a tendency to affect relationships and so forth in various ways um and it's something you just learn i think over time to trust your instinct about and know that there are some times when it, it's kind of challenging to explain your sort of deepest truth about something in the moment, even in mm-hmm. a person or a situation. Um, it's it's hard to know, like, how much do I want to say, you know? And the closer yeah. you are to someone, the more compelled in a way through the relationship dynamic itself, you are to, to, to communicate in a very direct way. So it is tricky, but I just think that trust yourself, trust your instinct. And so it's like riding a bike almost, like sometimes you'll overcorrect. And other times you just, you just feel like, oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple. So I don't know. Um, our guest may have something more to say about it than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely completely agree with uh, with with Angela about it. Um, I I will look into into your experience about it. Let me just find you in the gallery. I'm sitting and looking at Angela. Um, there you are. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> um I think it's super interesting every time we get um, feelings like that, when we get like nervous or concerned or angry or fearful or feel shameful or guiltful or something like that. I find it so, so interesting because there is a lot of things attached to absolutely nothing. But it's it's really interesting to look into what is the underlying fear really about. But what is it you are diverting it from? Because we have that tendency to, for example, like you say, I'm I'm really, really nervous about how my Janice, my colleague, how she's gonna take when I, you know, tell her that I'm working with Angelo, you know, personally on this level. I'm really, really concerned about how, you know, how she's going to react. And that diverting away from your experience into talking about Janice, how Janice is managing her life, her emotional life and her psychological foundation, all that. That's super interesting. Why are you diverting? There's something that you are, uh, you rather want to talk about than than what is really under underlying. And there are like four steps where you can look into into feelings and emotions like that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The first one is obviously just looking into you know, knowing that it this has nothing to do with Janice. It's got nothing to do with anybody outside. We're we're we are more concerned about ourselves. We are concerned about what is happening in us. So the second stage is looking into that 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 um, contraction that you feel when you think about how sh- how they are going to react. I'm not I'm not saying that it's not an issue with family members. And if for anybody hearing this, please hear it's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just you know I love to unravel you know what is what is going on on the surface. So so the second one is is looking into what what is that. A belief under underneath about you that you that makes you fearful or shameful or or anything. I believe none of it is true. It's it's just a thought about something. So it's not dangerous at all to look at. It's just a thought. So what is that underlying belief about? And underneath that, there's a cover up happening because, like we talked about um, first with 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 Lubaina, that. Um, that there's there's a huge difference between a sensory experience and a contraction happening in the body, 
and the thought attached to it. And we have a tendency to say this contraction that I feel right now, this is shame or this is fear. But if you detach the, the, the label about shame or fear or whatever it is, if you detach that and you just sit with that sensory experience, you're going to feel it's something completely different because there's a huge difference between the assumption about what is going on and what is actually going on. So I would just, you know, use this amazing group that you have here and to, you know, ping pong about it and look into it and, and just know that whatever thought and description of a thought that comes up, it's just a description. It's just posted. It's just a description. It's not true at all. Okay. Well, that's that's really helpful. Thank you. That's kind of what I, I was feeling about the situation, but I just thought it would be interesting to get more insight on it. So thank yeah. you both. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just piggyback on that very briefly. Um, there, there's a measure of patience with all of this because the, the complexity of life if there is any complexity, it has to do with human consciousness and interactions with other humans. That's the kind of stuff that can take quite a while to really sort out, and maybe it never really fully sorts out. But um, but I will tell you, in retrospect, things like this come up so much less than they ever would have in the past. Things are get, just get so simple that even a thought about, what am I going to say to so-and-so in 10 minutes, it's just gone. It doesn't, doesn't even register after a while. And so things just get simpler and simpler and more immediately present as far as whatever is needed it's already immediately available and it's it's in the sense fields and and that's it you know so so some patients just knowing that this the process of unbinding itself will just clarify and there's a sort of prajna wisdom behind it all that you won't know you won't see it it's very mysterious and yet um you're sort of in good hands that way so things do tend to just simplify all right love, well, thank you yeah love love that answer so much thank you Thank you. And your answer was perfect. Okay. So we have uh, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hello. Hi. I am calling in to ask about, um, Angela, I've been watching your videos for a little bit now, probably a few months. Um, don't think I've uh, experienced that you know, awakening shift or anything like that. And one thing that kind of stood out to me, I don't remember which video it was, as you mentioned, um, if you haven't had that shift, it might be good to set emotion work to the side and focus on that first. And I suppose to me, uh, it, it's kind of feels like they're very highly related. Like I would say awakening is the most important thing to me, not, not emotion work, but I guess it kind of feels like to say emotion work isn't, important to me it is the number one important to me is like trying to avoid it and so yeah I, I at the same time i sort of watched your videos i kind of got to a point where i needed to throw everything i could at whatever this suffering was and um i started along this process with like a, a, um with emotion work but a lot of times i feel it is like trying to name beliefs or like right now I'm, I'm trying to come up with like core beliefs about myself. That's part of this process I'm doing. It feels very mental, like heady. Whereas most of my, it seems like kind of positive feelings about this situation is, is very much like that was what I was trying to do. That, that's the problem. Like I'm trying to come up with the reason why I feel this way. And I've been feeling a lot better just sitting and letting like just whatever happens, happens like the Shikantaza kind of style sitting. So I, I didn't know if you had, uh, you know, for somebody that hasn't had the awakening yet, um, it, you know, and, but it feels pretty drawn to emotions, uh, emotion work. Like what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a really great question. So, um, if I remember right, the video I made, um, I was essentially saying that sometimes, so, so let me just back up and say, when I talk about emotion, I, as I described in my book, I really have to find out what someone means by emotion when they're tell talking to me about emotion. Like kind of feel into what what they're what they're referring to because emotion's kind of on a spectrum. And at one extreme end of the spectrum, it can be completely mind identified, very heady stuff, very narrative based. And there's actually a lot of repression of of emotion going on. And there can even be manipulative types of conversation and language and all all this stuff can happen. 
at the other extreme end of emotion is exactly what was pointed to in the first question. That if you really finally, after the final analysis and the dropping of all the, the boundaries and so forth, there's nothing but sensation, ultimately. And that's a huge relief. It's, it's, a, um, it's such a gift. Uh, so, But in between, there are all kinds of shades, right? So what I was essentially saying in that video is that sometimes we're, we're so prone to turning an emotional experience into a narrative and a story that, you know, to really just go after that first shift in, in, in a way like Renzai Zen might with a koan or something like that can be hugely valuable because you're breaking the, the nearly constant tendency to re-identify, to get back into a story and narrative. And that constant tendency is actually a very simple thing. It is a tendency, but it's a simple thing that's functioning so consistently sometimes for us that we don't actually see the mechanism of what's happening there. And we just end up back in a narrative. We're chasing our tail. So you have to feel into where you are with that because where I was before that initial shift, I would have, I could have talked about emotions forever, but it was so heady for me. There was so much repression. I needed to, I needed to have a, a significant alteration or fracture in what felt like my identity up here. And when that happened, it, it, I had so much more access to everything, so to emotion work and to looking into beliefs and so forth. So you do have to kind of feel into this with you. And I think, as I said in the video, trust your own instincts. If you really feel like, no, I really want to get, there's this grief here. And I just feel so compelled to get to the bottom of it. And that's what's really pulling me. That's what my instinct tells me to engage. That's fine. I, I, I can't argue with that. And I wouldn't. Um, but if you feel like you're spinning your wheels with it, if you feel like a, just a record, broken record going over and over and over, same st story, same narrative for years on end, same emotions, a lot of narrative around them, and you just feel sort of stuck there, stuck here, not getting down deep, um, then you might want to sort of really go for that sort of one-pointed approach, um, really looking into in, in real time, in one moment of extremely clear looking, vigilant looking, who or what is actually believing that next thought? Is there something there? What is it? But look in real time, very granular, very, very direct. Look into the nature of thought. Who or what is identifying with one thought right now? What is a thought? Where is a thought? Where are you, the thinker of the thought? You know, something very, very direct. So again, trust your instinct on this. You, you may That may not be your sort of karma at this moment, but it could be next week or it could be in, in six months. But if you really feel compelled to do some sort of emotion work, a modality, therapy work, relational work, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. it all in all, it, it's it's fine. This this whole thing is a very natural process, actually. And it, it, what it really requires, no matter what you're doing in this moment, what practice or what approach, what it really requires is a willingness, a true, true willingness to see what's really happening, period. That's it. Just to really just see what's really, really happening and be willing to let go of some very fundamental beliefs you might have about who you are. That's about the best way I can say it in the moment. Great. Thank you. Now that is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Anela, do you have anything to add? No, you said it. You said it. It was beautiful. Um, the, the, the only thing I would like to add is that um, that we tend to put feelings and emotions up like, like super, super important. And we really, really need to pay attention. Just be aware that it's not a diversion. Just like just like a thought can come in, we can divert ourselves into a black hole, uh, and and of very often we use feeling and emotions and thought, put it up as, on a pedestal as if it's really really important. Um, but what Angela, what he said with just sitting with that direct pointing and direct focus is is goal. Yeah. Okay, I think we're down to Simon. Hi there. Um, so earlier on today, I caught up my wife where we were working in the garden and um, she, I asked her, you know, can I go one of my meetings later on today? She said, yes, of course, you enjoy them, don't you? And I thought, I don't know if I enjoy them. <laughs> but they're necessary and it's the only message I want to hear and the way you give that message. And when I read your book, I find it fascinating. 
Um, it's more than fascinating. It's everything. But I realised my mind is distracting me, or is trying to distract me from this message. It, it's giving me everything to do except this message. And yet when I'm in this message, when I'm on this call now, it's, it's the only truth. But I'm so aware of my mind distracting me. And I've been on the spiritual path for such a long time. And I've done the hours of meditation. Um, I've been with people who, you know, before you go on a Zoom call, you have to have a shower. And all the nonsense they can dream up of in their mind. But this is the truth. And I just wanted to know... I just saw where my mind distracted me from memory, distracted me from this message, and it's almost becoming an enemy. And yet, when I'm in this message, it's the place to be. So, I don't know why I want to tell you that. Good. That's a no. That's a really good question and statement. Uh, do you want to start, or would you like me to start? No, no, you start. Okay. So yeah, I I feel really moved to tell you. Um, your sincerity is very, very obvious, obvious to me. You, you are so aligned the right way for this, for this, this total unbinding process. Is it going to play out in two years, five years? It doesn't matter to me. Your, your sincerity and your orientation to truth is very obvious to me. No doubt about it. Okay? That's what matters. That, I just want to say that first. That's what really, really matters. Because I've occasionally interact with somebody where it's like they know the stuff, they know the words, they know the books and all that, but there's something I, I still really feel them holding back. There's something, there's like maybe a fear, really a mind identified thing going on. And even that's fine. That'll break. But with you, I it's like, you're like, right, you're, you're really wanting to, something to drop here. Um, so then the next thing I want to tell you, and that's great. Good. Next thing I want to tell you is there's a thought that says my mind is fighting me on this. My mind is distracting me or stopping the process. How sure are you that that's actually true? Because the only way you can know that or have any idea that that might be happening is to have one thought that says it right now. Without that thought, who are you right now? What if I just take that away from you? Well, yeah, I, I know it's my mind because what I'm in this talking to you now is all fear. It's a sort of fear. It's feeling. It's emotion. When I'm picking to you, I just feel oof, waves and waves of emotion. Whereas my mind, it's just Mr. Logic. Um, and it's, I know it's distracting me. You know, I go on YouTube and I'm, I go on YouTube for you to look at your videos. And then, oh, there's something else here. There's some kickboxing, which I know I've never done kickboxing. But, you know, and, yeah. and it's like my mind, well, that's interesting. It's like, no. But then when I, when I spend my time and put that video on a view or it's, that's what yeah. I want. You're 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 right. You're right there. So the emotion you're feeling, that release, that fear, all of that, that's that's the right direction for you mm. right now. And now I've, I've talked about this this fear barrier. It can be daunting, but mm. it's really a sensation. Ultimately, it can be quite intense. You might have an increased heart rate. It can be quite something, you know, compared to other experiences. But when we don't put a story on that including the story that says, oh, well, I'm, when I'm listening to this video, it's easy, but later on when, or what happened yesterday and the day before and the day before, that's actually, those are simple thoughts and they're only one thought right now. But they, the th a thought can sometimes, when it uses this this illusion of time, it can, it can claim a lot more space and territory than it actually occupies. Because I know that in one sense, that feels very real to you. I know you believe that thought, but the good news is I don't. Because I've seen through that thought. I used to believe those thoughts. But when you tell me that like, oh no, my mind is powerful and this and that. Um, in one sense, it's really only as powerful as you, is to the degree you believe that one thought. Okay. I, you can have had a thousand thoughts today, 10,000, a hundred thousand thoughts in the last week. All of those thoughts can have been there. And that doesn't touch your true nature at all right now. It doesn't, it doesn't m touch the fact that that all of that is actually illusory. That those thoughts are simply like a movie that you're watching in a moment. And that as soon, soon as you turn away from that movie, there's something entirely different happening here. 
something vast beyond any of that. And there's a little part of you that's still a little unsure if it wants to drop into that. But that's okay. But that's not a thought. That's a just a little, it's just a, it's like a little bit of fear. Or it's a little bit of like, well, who the hell am I going to be when I finally let go even of the narrative that I can't let go? Who will you be when you let go of the narrative that says I can't let go or that says my thoughts are in control? Who will you be? What will you be? What do you have to lose? Maybe you have everything to lose, but are you ready to see what happens? You got to really get leverage on yourself with this. And you can inquire in the way I'm talking to you and you can watch this back. But your sincerity is the fuel here. And you're, and you're being tired of suffering. I know you are because I was and I know what it looks like. That's the fuel. Trust it. Trust yeah. the suffering. It's here to fuel this process. Yeah. The suffering is horrible. Isn't it? It's just, just that empty feeling inside. It's just it's like, oh, it's just, like, yeah. It, it is, but it's also the direction right now. Right. It's, it's showing you something. It's showing you something that no narrative can encapsulate, no narrative can contain. No story about what happened to you yesterday, the week before, why you watch my videos, all of that. I'm not trying to minimize your narrative. I'm trying to show you that it's a narrative. I'm trying to show you it's it's really just a series of thoughts. Story. And then there's another the one story. thought that is summarizing all those other thoughts. That's the one that feels like, okay, this is me finally. And part of you is going, God, I'd really hate that thought. And But part of you is going, whew, somewhere to land. Don't land there anymore. Don't land in the suffering anymore. Yeah, the suffering thought. Go towards the sensate sensory experience, even if it's fear. Just let it be here. Don't grasp anything anymore. That's your way. And you can do this. This is this I really want you to hear at a deep level. You can do this yourself. You don't need me to do this for you. You don't need me to be here telling you. This could happen tonight, could happen in one minute, could happen, you know, just carry this this with you, this willingness to let go, even of the thought that says, well, my mind is so whatever. It is, but trust me, this is way beyond your mind. The power of this is fully beyond any concept of the smartest person that's walked the face of the earth. Yeah. And I know, and I know you know that instinctually. So all I'm really doing as I talk here is just repointing you back until that, get that fire going, get the fire going and then just let it burn you up. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Keep keep that fire with you. The yeah. the cauldron is has all the right ingredients in it right now. It's got the suffering. It's got the sincerity. It's got the frustration. Mm. Um, there's just a little bit of you that's trying to like make a list of the ingredients of the cauldron. Still, don't worry about the ingredient list. Don't worry about the thoughts. They don't. They're not nearly as powerful as they seem to be. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. That's that's what I needed to hear. Thank you. Yeah, man. I'm 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 happy for you. I think you're in a really good place, but I know it doesn't feel like a good place. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Anything to add? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I loved everything you said, and and I also think that that the way that you are addressing it, Simon, is really beautiful. Um, the only thing I would like to like bring your awareness towards is that the only thing that there is, the only thing that is in reality is just this moment with a sensory experience. And in the sensory experience, you have everything you can see and the, there's just seeing happening, everything you can hear and it's just hearing happening and what you can feel and smell and taste. And then there's also thought and thoughts are just coming up just like a smell or taste. It's nothing more than that. But we tend to believe that there is a thinker, there's a thinker, and that thinker is against me, against me somehow. But the thinker is a thought too. Mm. It's just a very persistent thought that we then believe in is stronger than the sense of smell or the sense of hearing or the sense of, of seeing. But it's just empty air. There's nothing there. What happens to a thought when you don't think it? And if the thinker is not thinking of a thought, what happens to the thinker? You know, it's, it's, it's just gone. And then you get back to exactly what Angela, what he's talking about, that just pure being. And there might be an undercurrent of fear of, oh, shoot, what is happening now? You know, there might be an undercurrent of that. Stay with that. Stay with that. Because even that is a thought. Even the fear of what would happen or how, how, 
how great life is going to be without suffering. Even that is a thought. It's just a thinker that is thinking a thought, and the thinker is a thought too. Yeah, good. Thank you. So true. Yeah. Right on the money. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, if I if I could summarize what causes that initial shift, it's exactly what she just said. It's seeing, really seeing that the thinker itself is a thought. What what appears to be a thinker, what feels like a thinker, is really nothing but a thought. It's just a series of thoughts. When that really deeply like lands, it's it shifts something because you realize, oh, oh God. people tend to say things like, "None of this has ever happened. None of this stuff I've ever thought about has ever happened," and it's. It's just a huge release, of course, but you're you're just like right on the edge. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's slippery. Okay. Cool. Great question. All right. We are down to Yvonne. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm so nervous to talk, but I will continue. Um, um, as a few months ago, um, I, the me just dropped out of me and uh, it was the most devastating and heartbreaking experience I've ever had. I'm 75 and I've been studying non-duality for about 35 years. Um. And I had to sort of, I, I, I'd been reading Suzanne. I'd been not reading, I'd been watching Suzanne's videos. And it just sort of happened. And um, so I kind of thought, oh. I was in someone else's house, so I rushed down and I thought, I'm going to normalize myself and watch television or something. Um, so me eventually came back. And also, after reading your book, um, at one point, um, I uh, I, ha I med was meditating, and suddenly I, I felt an expansion, and um, and then I couldn't stop laughing, and I saw that there were no problems, none at all, and they were all opportunities. However, just recently, I realised I've uh, I had a mini stroke um, uh, last September, and. Um, I've now got to have um, uh, probably a new mitral valve put in. And after being so he healthy and sort of so fit, I've identified with being fit. And now I'm kind of trying not to identify with being unfit. Um, but also I'm trying to not feel the fear of putting myself into the hands of the medical profession. So I would like my me to disappear again now. But of course, it happens naturally, and it will happen when it happens again, if it happens at all. Um, and I'm nervous speaking because I'm thinking, is my question relevant to anything? I don't know. It's the fear and not thinking of what might happen, just taking it moment by moment. And uh, I feel a bit scrambled speaking. Uh, but I quite like the realization that the thinker, uh, the thinker is in it itself is a thought. Yeah. Yeah. But tricky. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful question. <laughs> then statement. <laughs> Nola, you want to start? I... Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have more to say? But what? Do you have more to say or? No, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just glad I spoke speaking. <laughs> and that, yeah. Do you want, do you want me to start, Angela? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you. Uh, Ivan, I just want to send you so much love. Um, thank you. There is, there is nothing that can rattle us that much as when we are, you know, facing impermanence yeah. uh, facing our mortality and facing that that you know the body is yeah getting old yeah. and sick and you know decay is yeah. happening and yeah and the first thing i would like for you to do is really really evoke all the 
love and compassion and um, kindness towards yourself. Because there is a protection in in what you're doing. There's there's um you know a very heartwarming <laughs> protection in what you're doing in in creating that diversion to what you're actually feeling because you're very very raw and very very um, sensitive. Um, and what I really would like for you to do is to see if you can evoke the part of you. That is your, you know, loving mo- mother and protecting father. So you are, you are your parent. You are protecting you. And um, I al- always talk about and always have the kind of like the starting point in that that time doesn't exist. You know, it's it's a completely man man made object that we only have. So things make sense. And if you can put yourself like just, you know, close your eyes and, and connect with, with your body right now, and then connect with the part that is feeling afraid and that is feeling sad and that is feeling discombobulated and is completely besides yourself and just create space for that. It's okay. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to. Whatever you're experiencing right now in your body is completely, completely fine and you can handle it. You can sit and just create space where you're not grasping onto anything that needs to be any different because this moment is not missing anything. This moment doesn't need to be any different. You don't need to be any different. There's nothing needs to happen for anything to be good or to be wonderful or to be horrendous or to be everything is present in this moment right now. And if you connect with that, and really, really just open up, open up the heart and open up to that space where you have so much compassion with whatever, whatever surfaces you just have that it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. To have that, this too will pass. Are we going to get that it is passing? The yes. passing. When we talk about looking into the, into our direct experience in this moment, that moment is already passed. Yes. Just really having a renewal of love and love and love and love and it's just compassion and soothing and 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 just really, really meet yourself. And when you get that fear in you because a thought comes in, then just allow the thought to be there and feel how you're soothing and smoothing everything out and it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with needing a medical procedure. There's nothing wrong with being old and getting... No. Jesus, yeah. everything is fine. Everything is fine. So keep yes. reminding yourself of that over and over and over. Um, and really you. remind yourself that everything is fine. Thank you. you. Are, yes, you're supposed to be. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't have I don't have anything to add. I mean, I, I would have said something similar. It's it's just a matter of. I mean, this is obviously, um, uh, things are moving for you in big ways, energetically, and with the the realization process. Um, It's also an example that doesn't always go in exactly a certain order. You can have these very, very direct experiences of no self, and then something a little different comes in and so forth, but it will clarify. And if I would give you a a sort of non-dual pointer or a a practice type pointer, there, it doesn't necessarily seem like it at first, but over time it becomes obvious that what she, what um, what she's explaining to you this 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 holding yourself, this okayness, um, this this meta practice or this meta acknowledgement of of this 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 deep love uh, for experience itself is actually yeah. the the sort of luminous non dual aspect actually the, that that yes, live sure. luminous yeah. non dual aspect which will balance itself naturally with the empty aspect. And that's when things just get clearer and clearer and and more free. the The freedom is is yes. sort of in the in the the no self aspect and the the yeah. um, the non arising aspect and so forth. At the same time, the the sort of meta and and the uh, is in that luminous non dualistic. There's no boundary anywhere. There's nothing outside. There's really only this, and only this needs to be attended to. And then as those balance, then there's this very deep deep. 
Yeah, it's funny. When that I, when coming I, together. But when I'm talking with the doctors, I sometimes feel like I'm stoned um, because, um, it, oh, anyway, yeah, that's a simple thing to say that, I, I, yeah, I just feel the deep joy as well as the fear. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, and it does kind of become intoxicating in a sort of way. That luminosity is just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, very nice. So nice to hear you, hear from you and see you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Angela. Yeah. Best of luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see where we're at here. I think we are down to Jeff. Hey, guys. Hey, Jeff. Um... Wow, you just, these answers are already so wonderful. <laughs> um, I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. Combination of the uh, the punk band and the baseball team. So, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I missed. That. I was like, it doesn't look exactly like I'm used to seeing it. But yeah, yeah, there's a little set, a San Francisco Giants in there. Cool. <laughs> um, I, I have a unique situation going on right now where, um, and I'm gonna. No, I'm not gonna try not to cry during this. I'm just gonna let it ride. Um. Uh, so my dog, who has been a whew, huge part of my life for 12 and a half years, um, he's going to be, uh, in Buddhist terms, entering the bardo on Tuesday. And uh, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of grief uh, around that. And uh, I have a, a long history of suppressing emotion. And so kind of my big practice around this is uh, making space for the grief. Um, you know, letting it be there, trying not to push it away. Um, but I guess my question is, is I also, I, I recognize that um, that I have kind of a unique opportunity here and that you know, this hugely strong emotion is rising up pretty regularly. And I was just, I was wondering, is there any way to, to kind of use that to, you know, to help deepen realization. Um, just because it's not a situation that I would, you know, normally be in in everyday life. So, well, first of all, um, my condolences and, uh, yeah, wow. What's your dog's name? Jake. There he is. If you can see him. Jake! Oh my gosh, what a cutie. <laughs> what a cutie. So he's sick, huh? He's had cancer for four years. Oh, so. has. Well, yeah. So it's amazing that he's fought it for so long. It's amazing yeah. that he's made it to 12 and a half. So I'm you know, hugely grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you feel to me like you're doing exactly what you should be doing. I mean, you've, you're vulnerable, you're open, feeling what 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 this is, and not seeming to make unnecessary stories uh, about it. Um, I, I don't I don't know if you need to use it. You know, the word use it. I'm not sure if you need to use this. Just just let it take you. Just let it take you deeper in. And 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 actually, and I'm in one sense, if you're if you're looking for a um, a practice based on this or a strategy, you might it might get in the way a little bit, you know, let this just take you into these unknown spaces. Like we can't know, you can kind of imagine how you feel now and imagine, well, on Tuesday, I'm probably going to feel like this and even more, but you, you can't know. Right. So let's just, let's just stay right here in this mystery. And the access point is always the sensations, right? It's yes. these sensations, the feeling of your hand on, on, the, on your, on Jake's fur, your, your breath, um, the tears streaming down your face. So stay with this let this mystery just unfold in a completely natural way. That's, that's all I have to say. And, and my heart goes out to you and Jake, um, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it's mixed emotions. You know, Jake's gonna go, go to the next place <laughs> as, as I was watching a video recently about, um, uh, it was Brad Pitt and a Patois exchange with a Jamaican lady, but he says, I'd take people to the next place. <laughs> But, you know, there, I, there's always that thing about death. Like, even when my father died, I was so fascinated, you know. It's like, wow, you're just, you're going to just go to the, you know, just great beyond, you know, that that just dissemination of all that energy. There's something so fascinating about it. And, of course, on a human level and a 
an emotional level. It's also very sad at the same time. But there's so much here, you know, energetically that that is available in these situations. So just make yourself fully available to it, which you seem to be doing. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. There's there's actually there's also it's the grief is mixed with, uh, you know, quite a bit of gratitude that uh, not only for how much he's given to me, but also for uh, the fact that he won't be suffering anymore because he's yeah. he's getting to that point. So. Yeah, yeah, and a, and a relief, of course, for him as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Thank you. Sure, Vanilla, you have anything to say? Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to send you so much love. Um, I know that for some people it's just a pet, but if anyone that has dogs or cats or has a pet, no, it's not a pet. It's 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 a huge part of of us. So I come, I'm sending you so much love. Um. And I also want to say that I, I really like that you that you see this as a great opportunity. And like I said to Ashley, you know, I'm all about finding out what is what what is the the opportunity in this in this situation. And like Angelo, he said that when when you feel when when you think of, of Jake and you feel the emotions coming up and you are crying and all of that, see if you can expand it so it's not only limited to Jake. So you allow the body to have the flood gaze open. And it might be, you know, experiences from when you were five or, and it might be, you know, experiences about, you know, being bullied at school or it might be in things you have witnessed and never, ever, it never had, you know, the the space or, or the time to, to be expressed or to be experienced. So allow yourself not to limit this experience to just being a, a sadness about Jake and losing and all of that. Allowing yourself to, to, since you're in that vibration right now, use the opportunity. And and just whatever comes up, don't have any thoughts connected to it. Just allow it to, to come up and come up and come up. And you will feel that there is so much <laughs> that is lying in the body, just hidden away, that we don't want in, to go ahead and get in contact with. But here we are. Here you have a huge opportunity and the door is going to open into it. Just allow all of it to come and come and come, and you will you will also have experiences where you you can't put any words on what it is, and don't try to minimize it with putting a label on it. Just be experiencing what is happening, what the body needs, because we have a lot of of traumas in the body that needs expression without us trying to frontal lobe put a label on what it actually is about. So just you know. Enjoy it. I know it's horrendous to say, but you know what I mean. Just and enjoy it and go with it, and and use this huge opportunity that you're in right now. It's 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 a, a yeah. It's it's a great opportunity for for freedom and awakening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. as someone who has suppressed emotions for most of his life. Um, be just being open to this you're right is is already been just uh an eye opener for me just to just to, to even feel the resistance to the emotions start to rise up yeah and allow that as well and have it dissipate and emotions just rise up you know on top of it and i mean all of that is is just it's been amazing yeah and then and then see if you can let go of that of that identification i am a guy that is not you know i'm 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 one of those with suppressed emotions See if you can let go of that identification and go, well, I'm also one of those that is bawling my eyes out at every, you know, sensitive commercial coming up. And here we go again. You know, see if you can allow yourself to be more than just a guy that is not allowing emotions. See, explore that. Are you so sure that you're one of those guys that are not into emotions? Because you don't seem like that to me. So just, you know, be curious to that and see where it takes you and just, just go with it. Just go with it. And you've got an amazing group here of people that I'm sure has your back and will support you all the way. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, all right. We have Susan. Hi. Hi, Susan. Hi. I just... I'm sorry. Yeah. Jeff, all my love to you and Yvonne as well. I just, I just, my heart feels everything that is with you guys and send my love. Um, 
our dog died last year and his name is Swisher, but we named the Wi-Fi after him. So he is energetically here for you too. I hope that helps. Um, I, I, I'm this, uh, I can see how my mind's operating here and I feel like what I'm going to say is selfish um, after all this, but I, um, I came to a point I've, I've been working with trying to really surrender and, and listen to that, that deeper wisdom in life. And that has really done well by me recently, but I, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. It's not what I expected. I know you warned me. It's not what I thought. I thought I could manage this. Just like everything else. It reminds me of when I had my first child and and she was a little early and she was feisty and I was you know, doing my job and my job was my job and all of a sudden nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered, and you know there was no control, and and just nothing like that. I guess that's the story I've I've got for you. Just I uh, I thought it's not what I thought. It's not what I thought. So. You you know, um, it never is. <laughs> It never is what we think it's going to be starting starting out this process. Um, the 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 seeming identity structure has a lot of competing agendas. It seems like one solid thing or one solid person in here, but the more we start to pick up pick it apart or it picks itself apart or it deconstructs, we see there's really just a lot of competing agendas. And part of one of those agendas, not all of not all of the agendas there, but one of those agendas, it wants to be able to use everything, predict everything, know how things are going to go and say, oh, this is for me. And I chose this because, and, and to sometimes we, we try to use that kind of thought or belief to stabilize ourselves, our identity. It can feel good in a sense, only until life shows us that things just don't always go the way we want them to. And life will always show us that always one way or another, we'll always see that, it, you know, it's just a matter of time. And that, that identity structure does not like that. It gets it gets really threatened when something goes, when something shows us that things don't go the way we expected them to, in small ways and in big ways. Um, with this process that we're talking about, it shows you that in a really, really big way. But the deeper teaching, the deeper truth behind that is the biggest gift you'll ever get in this lifetime. You think you wanted to be in control. I don't mean you as an individual. I mean you as the mind identified world of mind identity seemingly in human consciousness that we all reinforce among one another we speak these languages and these communication styles that seemingly keep reinforcing it um that whole thing being an illusion that it's not in control in the way it thinks it is that it's not even living in the world it thinks it's living in to see through that is not just a change in paradigms it's not just a oh now i see the world a little differently it's to actually re-inherit your true nature, <laughs> your your true position. And your true position is vast beyond anything the mind can imagine or plan or expect or get disappointed about. All of those worlds of that all relate back to the one that thought it was in control are kind of simultaneously obliterated in one sense. And the mystery underneath all of it, the 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 palpable intimate, undeniable, inescapable mystery behind all of it is really what I think people actually want. That's what you actually want. But again, the barriers that keep us getting redirected into the mind and into thought and into what we think we're going to get out of this, those fight it to some degree, or they seem to. They're just thoughts, just as we've been talking about from the very first question. Ultimately, they're just thoughts. But to the degree we get entangled in them, they kind of have a defense mechanism. They kind of feel real at times. Um, but I promise, I just want to promise you, <laughs> there's something deeper beyond all of all of that, even the disappointment and all, um, that that is really marvelous. It really is. And 
that's what's actually been driving this the whole time for you. It's not been the the competing agendas or the mind's version of it. I promise you that. There's something deeper going on. It's just that we can't encapsulate it with thoughts and beliefs and expectations. So sometimes the mind really puts up a fight and just goes, damn it, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't how I thought it was going to go. And, and I, and I want to throw the whole thing away. Well, you can't, you know, but that's good that you can't because the part of you, the deeper truth of all of this that's driving this whole process, um, it knows with knowing is putting a little bit more on it that needs to be there, but it, it knows where this goes. And it, and it, it, it has an instinct about the living truth that is available to you. And that's what's driving it for you as a, as a seeming individual and also as the infinite non-self. Um, and that turns out to be very good news. So sometimes we we really have to go through that that sort of dark space where where we're like, why did I do this? Why did I start? I, I don't want to do this. Oh, now I, and then you start to feel like well, I don't even have control anymore. Um, St. John of the Cross wrote something like, Oh gosh, I'm gonna I'm gonna totally butcher it, but it was like to go where we know not, we have to take a path that we know not, or something like that. So you end up in this place where you you, you can be disorienting, but but you will get used to that disorientation, and then it will kind of sort of start to dissolve into this this more vast mystery, and then the process itself will start to feel more benevolent, more enjoyable, more like, wow, I'm so grateful that this is even available um so that that i don't know how much that makes you feel better and i'm not really trying to make you feel better just giving you a, a bit of a larger context there is something in you that's even deeper than those doubts and those frustrations and that disillusionment those those, those have a place in, in our psyche and we don't we shouldn't just wholesale throw them out sometimes we have to address these at different levels including the emotion level but underneath all of it there's something you can trust here that's that's what i want to say yeah, that that's helpful. Thank you. Sure. Vanilla may have a totally different approach. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just, I'm just sitting and and thinking, you know, Susan, when when you, I'm not sure that I'm going to be as helpful as Angelo, um, because he's so soft and so like warm, cuddly in the way that he expresses things. Um, when you say that I don't want to do this anymore, could would you mind being very specific? But would would you mind if we talk about that? If I ask it little, um, when you say I don't want to do this anymore, could you, could you walk me through it? What is it you don't want to do anymore? I I think I I don't want to. I don't want to admit or put aside that I'm not. It's not really. I'm not really Susan. I guess. That I'm not really me. I, I, yeah. So is it the work you don't want to do? Is it? Is it the? Is it the suffering you don't want to do? <laughs> because I completely get that. <laughs> that there's that there's a huge that's a huge verbal indicator to you when you say I don't want this anymore. You know, it's a great way. It's a great place to be. It's a great place to be to have that. Enough. I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. There's something. Um, I don't know. Do you have children? Yes. Yes. Do you remember how it was before? Do you, how many children do you have? I have three. You have three. Goodness. Do you remember? They're big. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Do you do you know? Do you remember how it was before you had kids and you had that expectation? You know, that was a little bit like you know. Hollywood movie or Hallmark or something like that, you know, with, with this, the tippy tappy toes of children and, and, and everybody's going to get along and, and we're just going to get so much stronger as a family. Those thoughts that you have before you get a family and then they come. Right. I, so where you're at right now, you are sitting mid-birth and going like, okay, I don't want this anymore. Well, there, there's, there's no shoving anything back or, you know, there's like nothing to do. But but what the only thing you can do is just embrace that you are you have you have you you're too far down the crossroad. There's no going back. There, there's no return because you have already unveiled the illusion of of you know having a family is a hallmark movie. You know, 
you know it's not. So you also know now where you sit and look back to how naive you were before you had your children that actually reality is bloody rough and is runny noses and is argument and is, you know, uh, bullying in school and it's uh, PTA and it's all of those things. But it's wonderful. You know, it's wonderful. But you could not in your wildest imagination imagine how it was going to be what it actually is because you can't. The mind, the ego, wants things to be in a controllable way. So you go into the birth and you have like, I'm going to breathe my way through this. You know, not how it's going to be. But the ego think that is how it's going to be. Just like I'm going and I'm going to join Angelo. I'm going to read his book and I'm going to be on his uh, on all his uh, meetings and all of that. And then then I'm going to be awake. It's, it's not at all how it is. Because we have expectations, and the good news is that expectations are so limiting. It's only a small, small fraction. It's like saying, I know what a tree is, and then you only refer to birch trees. There's so many other trees as well. I don't know if I'm confusing you even more, but it's just really telling you that where you're at now, it's a beautiful place to be. It's a beautiful place to be because everything, if you allow it, Everything is open right in front of you. And you having that feeling, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to look at it as the thought that is just tired of being in the, you know, in the steering seat, in the control. There's nothing that is in control. There's nothing that can control. It's just a complete delusion when you think that anything can be in control. Just like it's a complete delusion when you think back of how you thought it was going to be to have children. Life is so much richer than that you could ever imagine. And it's the same with this. Once the, the ego is not in the driving seat anymore and you just really go into what is actually happening right now. In your direct experience, in your body right now, whenever you feel that frustration coming up, See if you can do what what I did with with Ashley, where you where you have the assumption of what the direction is. That's one thing, and then in your experience, in your body, in your sensory experience right now, what is actually happening? Not what you think is happening, what but what is actually happening? And in there, you will feel a power and a freedom that you are not even aware of yet. Just like you get power as a parent, uh, as a mom and a mom of three, my goodness, you have discovered powers that you did not know that you had when you were 17. (laughs) It's the same. It's the same. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mallory. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. I wrote a few notes. Were you okay. trying? Were you trying to ask a question on the live last weekend? Was that you? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened. That was weird. It was some technical glitch, I guess. Uh, I put the word fundamentalist Christian in there, and I think maybe that was a no-no. I, I'm not sure. I didn't put a link. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> nobody. Um, I wrote down. Uh, I, I don't think I've had non-dual realization. Um. About two months ago, after I found you, Angelo, I realized I was uh, using neo advaita concepts uh, to bypass emotions and trauma. Um, I also realized uh, there's a part of my psyche that doesn't want to wake up, um, which I was oblivious to. Uh, I was projecting awakening into the future in order to avoid it. And, um, even though I want this more than anything, uh, but that belief fell away. So now I'm feeling the fear of it actually happening. Uh, So I'm starting to feel adrenaline rushes when I, um, and in practice. And I just wonder if you have any advice for approaching the fear barrier. Sure. So first of all, awesome. Those are, those are simple beliefs, but they, they can be surprisingly elusive to people for a long time 
One of them is, yeah, well, you, you can use a sort of idea about, you know, oh, there's no one, there's nothing, a neo advaita thing, and not realize, like, you're using a, you're still using a cognitive framework to stabilize yourself into, actually, um, to identify with in a sort of different way, right? Um, so seeing through that is really good. And then seeing that, um, what was the second thing you said you were? Part of my psyche was projecting awakening into the future. Yeah, exactly. And you can use that to stabilize yourself. You said it really well. That's exactly right. Without realizing it, we can sort of, I, I might say this, the illusory self, the the thinker, the thinker that seems to be there engaging thoughts, as we were talking about earlier, which itself is a thought, it, it sort of stays afloat sometimes or often in what it relates to. So if it's like, oh, I can't wait till that big event in the future, that's a stabilizing thought process because it's like enticing. We can keep buying into it. The ego really has nothing to sell you except for the future. That's what it can sell you. It can sell you later when. Later when you find that perfect relationship, later when you get some money, later when you feel better, later when you wake up. Um, so those are all just versions of the same story, right? And to see that is so good. So to be, okay, wait a minute. Oh, well, shit, if it's not something in the future that I'm going to do a bunch of stuff to get to, oh, you're kind of stuck like, oh man, there's nowhere to look right now except for right here in a very direct way. And what comes with that, exactly what you described, the body will start to respond and go, whoa, right? Because you're going, you're starting to go through an identity barrier or you're pushing right up on it. And this is a simple process here. From here on, it's quite simple. Just know that as you push on that identity barrier, the body mind will sort of interpret it as a threat in one sense, because you've been identifying with it. You've been identifying with the thoughts, the beliefs, the, the continuity of that thought process. And now you're breaking that, that spell. And it's like, whoa, something feels like it's falling. And it doesn't even know where to fall. Right. If I fall down or out or in or um, what I, my, I'll tell you my own personal experience with that is I started to feel exactly what you're talking about. Um, and it wasn't that long before awakening. It might've been a couple months or something, but I remember at one point I was like, okay, I'm just going to sort of let go into it. And it, and it got really intense for a minute and something in me like backed out and it was like, whoa, that's like scary. And then later on, all of a sudden I just had this notion that's like, if that ever happens again, it's completely safe to just let go in there. I, I don't know why I knew that, but I just knew it. And so the next time it happened, it was like, oh, intensity. Oh, intensity is a thought. Wow, heart rate's, you know, like really high. That's a thought. Well, I'm going to let go right now. Oh, that's another thought. Wait, am I holding on? Oh, holding on's a thought, you know? And then it was like even noticing sensations, like the, the reference to a sensation itself is a thought. And it's like, wow, well, what's actually here when w without grasping any thought at all? And then the mind just started getting quieter. And so... Just be really in those moments when you're sitting, you know, give yourself a little bit of time without distraction. In those moments you're sitting and, and sort of just observing any tendency to identify with any thought that is framing your experience at all. And just just tell yourself, okay, let go of that. No, don't don't grab onto that framework that says, I'm here, I'm in a body, I'm letting go, I'm holding on. Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Okay, what else? Bring it on until you're just in that purity of experience that's not defined by any framework. It's not defined by any view. It's not defined by any conclusion because all of those are just successive thoughts. And just the more you let go, those thoughts may just slow down until it's like just a space of beingness, let's say. But your mind will go, oh, this is the beingness. That's another thought. Just let go of it. It, you'll, but it will feel like something. It'll feel like a sort of awakeness that you don't have to think to verify. It's that it's self obvious in the sense, um, and that's it. Stay right there. Just stay with that, but stay vigilant such that no thought is framing your experience right now. And if it starts to, if you start to feel that pull to frame your experience with a thought, let it go. And just it's a it's a it's like a little meeting point between like a sort of alertness and a vigilance. But a relaxation. Don't don't let your body tense up too much. Just relax it so that you can just stay right there with that alertness. And it may feel quite neutral, but even no, that's also a conclusion. Just let it go. And you're I think you're like right there. It feels like it to me. So that's all I have to say. Just keep at it. It's it's a fun process and it's a very, very natural process. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all the work you're doing. <laughs> I know what?
Yeah, I, I I love that so much. I love that so much. I I just want to build on it to to anyone that has that fear for 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 what will come and what will change and and everything is going. You know, what Angela said it's it's so absolutely true because nothing is going to change. There's nothing that's going to change. It's already here. It's already here. You're just not attaching thought to it anymore. So the only thing that will happen is that you don't identify with a thought anymore. So nothing will change and everything will be different. Because the the thoughts are shaping the pseudo-reality we live in. And when the thoughts don't have that power anymore, that pseudo-reality is gone. But nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Thanks, Mallory. Okay, Bob. Hello. Um, you've talked in some of your videos about the the place you don't want to look. I wasn't really sure if that was before waking or not, but I've had a sense them holding back. Right. And um, I want to look where I don't want to look. I guess <laughs> that's it. Um, which seems stupid. It's like, why the hell would I ever want to do that? But <laughs> it's, I have to. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Counterintuitive. But at some point, it becomes a really helpful attunement. Uh, it can be really helpful. The flavor of this is around like fourth and fifth fetter, like like reactivity work, things like that. Um, can be it can be really good to attune this way. I want to see what I don't want to see. I want to feel what I don't want to feel, because we have very strong tendencies not to see certain things, certain reactions, certain um, essentially reactions, but but resistance patterns underneath. Uh, and just being willing to feel that discomfort, that discomfort of that restlessness or that feeling like I just got to get out of this. I don't know what I have to do. I want to distract myself. I want to I want to just run from this experience um, that that can be a good attunement and just sitting there looking at the thoughts and going, OK, well, the thoughts say that I can't handle this. I, I can't stand this. OK, that's a thought. It's a it's a uh, it's an interpretation or a judgment for the moment. But let me just sit here for 10 seconds. Okay, well, apparently I I can handle it for a period of time. Can I handle a little longer, you know? Um, and a little longer. And then that feeling of just like, I want to just jump out of my skin other rather than facing an experience, an emotion, a, a reaction. It just dials down a little bit. Still might feel hot, uncomfortable. Um, but the more you, you go back to this, the, uh, the more you're willing to just really again this all this stuff really goes back to not grasping the thoughts not touching it with thought or seeing that the thought or interpretation that says i can't handle it it's too much this is going to last forever realizing those are just unnecessarily sort of amplifying the experience and just letting them go um the more you're able to do that and just stay with the the physical experience the the easier it gets until it starts to feel it, it this is my experience but it can be something like going from this feeling of like, I have to do something, I have to do something, anything, anything to like, okay, this is just uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable and that's okay. I can actually handle it being uncomfortable knowing there's nowhere to go from here. This is the only place to be right now. And it's a it's a strange combination of like a sort of peace and a, and a sort of raw discomfort. That's a good place to be with this kind of thing, especially when you're talking about reactivity. So that's that's what I have to say. Our guest may have more to say. But she does a lot of fetter work. No, no, yeah, no. You said it. You said it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jeannie. Hello, Angelo. Hello, Camilla. Thank you both so much for being here with us today amazing wonderful oh thank you for coming I, you bet wouldn't miss it i um i've been practicing for 
many years, 35 or so. And the first six, I had an amazing teacher and in belief in, in the whole sangha that we we could do this and would do this has kind of kept me going for the next 30 years. And it, this has been a, a main focus of my life. And, but no shift. And I don't really have a question, Angelo, but I just, when you were talking with Simon, it brought me to tears just because the, the feeling of gratitude I have. That, that, that confidence that, that we can do that and that we are doing this and it's going to happen in some time and help me. I mean, I, I've been listening to you for about a year now and it really so helped me from my practice. My teacher is, is gone and I haven't really had much, didn't have much contact with him because he's in Japan, so it's a long ways away. Um, but yeah, just want to thank you how grateful I am and so grateful that you're bringing these other these other teachers in that to help guide us and show us their share their wisdom. Thank you so, so much, and I look forward to seeing you in Boone in, in November. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Great. I'm glad you're going to be there. You're welcome. And um, yeah, you I mean, you you just appear to me to be quite at peace and very honest and vulnerable and with a lot of gratitude. Just the way and the way you physically move actually looks quite um, just relaxed and very present, to be honest. So 35 years of work is is not doesn't go unnoticed. <laughs> yeah. So much. Welcome. Renella, you have anything to say? Yeah, it, no, it was just, uh, you know, I'm very much into like verbal indicators and stuff like that. And when you say that it's going to happen, I'm just like, no, 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 no. It <laughs> is happening. It is happening right now. It is happening. It's already, you know, alive. You guys being here, it's, it, it's already happening right now. Yeah. I believe that. Thank you so much. Although sometimes it doesn't seem like it. nothing. It, that's it. It's just a thought. That's just a thought. And it's just it's like when you when when you plant a little seed and you water it, you have no idea what's happening under the surface. You know, we that there's a lot of this that we do not know. We do not know. We just need you know to, yeah, to to trust the process, and just keep staying with what is actually alive right now and right now and right. Not go into thought, but what is actually alive right now, and then like. You know, a little seed it it will sprout. It it is happening. It is already happening. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's um it's in your experience. It is the totality of your experience right now. Actually. That's why it's 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 a very paradoxical thing we talk about. It's like, you know, the paradox of everything changes and nothing changes. <laughs> It's it's so already here. Um, there was an analogy I liked that uh, Rupert Spear made a while back. Um, and he said, you know, if you're looking at a movie screen, you're looking at the screen, but the movie's playing on the screen. So now you're kind of thinking about the movie and the characters and you're identifying with one of the characters. And then someone, and then you, you forget that you're watching a movie, right? You're in the storyline. And then I'm standing next to you and I poke you and I say, look at the screen. Right. It's not, is it, a, is it a new act to look at the screen? No, but you're forgetting that the screen is sort of the, the, the totality of what makes all experience possible is kind of the analogy he's, he's making is that you're looking, you are looking at the screen, but you're kind of forgetting that you're looking at the screen and the screen has the potential to show any narrative and it also has the potential to show no narrative at all. And it's still the screen. It's kind of that sort of a thing where it's, it's so, it's, it's almost like we're looking past it in a way when we believe a thought. It seems like we're looking past it. And and a lot of times the thought that, that hypnotizes is the one about time. We're looking past it because we're looking for something in the future, but 
since there is no future, well, all we can do is get a little hypnotized. <laughs> and the hypnosis itself feels a little off because it is a little off because we're just sort of readjusting our focus in this way that's kind of it requires effort to continuously put effort into mind. We're kind of playing the shell game with ourselves about the future that doesn't exist. It's just a little bit of an activity, but even that is all part of just this. So, so yeah, um, you know, maybe valuable to look into doubt as a thought because the doubt is only one thought right now. That's it. But if we believe it and we tend to believe doubt because we have self-doubt and the feeling of being separate and all that, which is a, a sort of deeper fixation that gets resolved at some point, um, we can believe that thought, but it's still just a thought. The doubt that says, ah, oh, well, not me or whatever. So, but I think you're overall, like I look at you and it's like very clear that this is, uh, this is expressing through you. Yeah, and Angelo, I would like to build on that, uh, what you talked about, that when we're standing and looking at the screen and we see the movie, because that is exactly how it is with the mind, with the ego. All thoughts we have is always about something. It's always something that is happening in the future or something that has happened in the past. And there's always a promise about something that can be better than what is right now. That's the only thing that thoughts are doing. It's always about something. And it's very much like that movie that is happening on the screen. That's the pseudo reality. And that's, that's where we live our lives. So the only thing Angelo is doing is poking you on the shoulder and going like, where are you right now? And that can draw you back to reality where you're just standing right here and there's no future and there's no past, there's just right here. And that is the waking up. That is what is happening when you wake up. You can still look at the screen and go into the pseudo-reality. You just know now it's a pseudo-reality. It, there's no whatever thought you have that give a promise about something better in the future. It's just a thought. It's future faking. It's just a thought. Reality is here right now, but Angelo poking you on the shoulder, that's reality. Now, I'm going to add to what she just added, and I'm going to say the, that, that movie screen of the mind, like I said, it has tricks, but its trick main trick is time, right? It's distraction and so forth. But, but it, there's something it does absolutely decidedly does not have, and that is the intimacy of presence of deep profound presence there's an intimacy here that when we're hypnotized by this world of values that i like this more than i like that this is all the fourth and fifth fetter stuff um this is more important that's less important i'm looking for this the future has a promise of this which is better than what i'm calling what's here now which is that it's all this value system stuff when you when that actually seems to but it doesn't really but it, it what it does is kind of filters out this experience of of this sort of absolute value of sensation, of the sense fields. There's this absolute infinite value here. It's it's so radically intimate. Um, I think of Thich Nhat Hanh, one of his later talks before he died, he was just sitting there and he was holding a cup of tea. And he was absolutely enraptured by this sensation of the warmth of the tea. He was talking about it. He was saying, this is it right here. He's turning the cup in his hand. He's just beaming. That's how much joy comes from sensation. We are living in a gold mine. We, we, we experience it all the time. Um, but, we, you know, the thoughts just keep telling you, oh, something a little better down the road, you know. Not really. There's no road to go down. There's just one more thought to believe, right? It's just to get you latched in and reel you into the next thought and the next thought and the next thought. But just come back and feel. Breathe. Take one breath. It takes one breath. One breath to, to be fully here again and again and again. Um, does it, it does it have to click all at once? It doesn't have to, but the, the act of reminding yourself through one sensation, feeling your foot on the floor, feeling your bottom in the chair, the soundscape, everything you ever wanted is here. I promise you. Yeah. And I want to add to what Angela added to what I added. And by saying that, that in this moment, in this moment, the only feeling that we have is contentment. And it's actually, it's kind of like a shortcut into awakening you into this moment right now. It's just feeling into it. The only feeling you can have is contentment because this moment holds everything. You cannot be anything but content. 
when you are in the moment because nothing is missing and nothing needs to happen. And it's just contentment, nothing else but contentment. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Thomas. Hey, Angelon. Hey, good to see you again. Good to be here. One day, ask you about meaning in life. I have always been um, seeking meaning. It's probably why I'm on this program right now. You know why I read your book, um, and I and I know that um, I have been more directed and sort of seeking meaning than a lot of my friends. Um, and I, uh, I think the last couple of years, I've really been interested in climate change and from studying it and the little bit I know, I have got the sense that that basically if we're on this sort of runaway train fueled by petroleum and there could be a cliff up ahead um and um you know i i think um of course from a non-dual sense you could probably deconstruct my own search for meaning it's pro i don't have any children don't have any family um if Probably I have more time and energy. Yet, you know, I'm following this pursuit because I don't have, uh, you know, family perhaps. But I do. Uh, I I know that in our culture there is a lot of meaninglessness. You know, so much on the internet, TikTok, Instagram. In my, that's probably a judgment, but all the drugs and alcohol. And um, my view is that, um, you know, this life is really sacred and it's important that I follow it. So I wanted to get your take on that. My, again, my concern from a non-dual sense is that it could be, meaning can be de deconstructed into nothing. And on um, I, anyway. Great question. Uh, Penella, do you have anything or? Oh, lots, but you go first. Okay. Um, there's different ways I could answer. So I'm like, okay, what, how direct to be? I've, I remember some of your questions in the past and I, I like, um, I can, I can probably be pretty direct with you, but, um, in my immediate experience, I'll say it that way. There's no need for meaning. There's no need for meaning or, and it's not, it's, this is neither meaningful or meaningless, neither at all. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fall in any category. It's free of all categories. It's free of all fabrications. It's free of all positions, free of all need. It's uh, it's neither divine nor mundane. There's no need to grasp it through a concept at all because it can't be done. Uh, Give me these teachings. I mean, this, okay. I mean, I mean the sensation of this, <laughs> this, this okay. here right now, and. It actually doesn't get any more complicated than that anymore for me, let's say. Um, does it mean that I'd never do something you would call uh, conventionally a complex action? No, I still do. I still work as an anesthesiologist and I make what you could call complex decisions. But in the moment of the experience, it's extremely simple. It's simple. that it, it always has been simple. It's just that the mind used to make a lot of noise. Like I might be managing, let's say I'm managing a situation where there's um, uh, the, the, maybe a high risk situation medically with a patient. In the past, maybe there would have been thoughts of like, oh gosh, what if something goes wrong? I better make the right decision here. This is right. really serious and dire, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now it's just actions are just taken. It's that simple. It's very, very simple. The same outcome, if not maybe a better outcome because there's less static in the mind, worrying, okay. thinking, standing back from the experience. The experience itself is 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 just fully functioning. It's fully functioning. It's fully integrated. It's fully empty, but also quite luminous. Um, right. And it, it turns out it just manages itself just fine. Everything does. Um, there's a there's a Zen master from the past, Bonky, who used to just walk around telling people, um, 
everything is perfectly managed in the unborn. I mean, the unborn isn't somewhere else. The unborn is this. This is unborn. And it, everything is perfectly managed here. Strangely enough, that includes birth and death. And it, it includes where birth and death have never touched. A and there's no need to even make a distinction between those worlds anymore at all. So um, everything is managed here. Now, if you want to back out of that into a more conventional way of speaking and say, how do these crazy things happen that we get ourselves into? The climate change and, you know, violence and, you know, the mind likes to come up with extreme versions of things like Pol Pot or, you know, these terrible genocide, right. all this stuff. And of course, they're, these are tragedies. Um, but, but what leads to that, in my opinion, mind identification, the ability for massive numbers of people to be halfway or fully unconscious to how they're affecting everything around them. So you can't wave your magic wand and change the world and make it less violent right now. But what you can do is wake up. What you can do is wake up more. What you can do is is dissolve any remaining illusions. And that's more than enough, actually. Um, more than enough. But you really can only know that through doing it, if that makes sense. And this isn't negating that maybe you'll take some, maybe you're a, an activist, maybe you'll donate money to uh, environmental, maybe you'll start your own environmental um, uh, fund or whatever it is. This doesn't negate any of that. That will either right. happen or that, this will, that'll either happen or it won't. So that's my, my simple and direct answer. And the deeper realization goes, the clearer it is that the best thing you can do for the violence in the world, for the unconsciousness in the world, is address your own. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I I, I absolutely agree. Um, I I see it as a as a really good opportunity to look into what what your belief is about meaning because there is no meaning. Um, the whole point of the word meaninglessness is that the you know that there is no meaning that that there's no there's no value put into it. And <clears throat> excuse me, when we have a when we have a meaning. And we put a meaning into it. It's always subjective, and it's always based on on our previous experience as something we can um, um, have an opinion about or or uh, divert our attention with. And and I actually find that really really interesting. That is the interesting part for me about this one, Thomas. That that you really look into what is it you're trying to divert from, because there is there's no opinion that is ever true. It's just an opinion. Just like whatever meaning we put into something, it's it all it's only meaning for you. Um, like Angelo mentioned, Pol Pot. Well, his mom probably liked him, and he thought it was great what he was doing. I mean, we we can we can you know take the entire human history, and there will be opinions and meanings in what happened. It would make sense to somebody and not to others. So it's a complete. It's a diversion. It's a never-ending diversion that that you're going into when you're trying to find meaning with things. So what I would suggest is to look into into the need for that for that diversion. And if it's about there's this like bottomless pit under you, if there's not a meaning with anything, then just stay with that. It is just a thought. It's just a feeling about a bottomless pit. There is no bottomless pit. There's there's you sitting here in front of me, and it's you and I talking. There's no bottomless pit. It's just a thought about something that needs to secure what is happening around you. That's another thought. You don't need to secure anything. You can just sit right now in your direct experience and what is happening right now. And like Angelo, he so beautifully guided about just before that whatever thought comes up, you just recognize it as a thought. It's an assumption about reality. It's a promise about something in the future that can be better. But it's just, it's future faking. It's its just a thought. Reality right now is your experience, what you experience right now, where you're sitting and you have your hand on your shoulder and you can feel your breathing and you can feel a body under your hand. If you close your eyes, you will slowly feel how everything just dissolves. Just stay with that over and over and over um, and look into what 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 is the diversion about? Well, Pernella, I, my uh, sense is that there are levels of value as far as climate change. In other words, there are things we could be doing that we're not 
there are, I could be driving an electric car instead of a gasoline. You know, I, I, I could be, in other words, um, so I'm uh, questioning about your statement that sort of values are an illusion or, or just something in the mind, because I think, you know, as far as science goes, there there is a gradient of things that we're doing or could be doing that will lead to a healthier environment in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And and if there were, you know, other people here that doesn't believe in climate change, we could have a little five hour debate about it. Because that's the whole thing. It's an opinion. It's an opinion. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy an electrical car and I'm not saying that you should just throw all the plastic you have into the ocean. It's, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just inviting you to question that belief that you have about finding a meaning because it is a diversion. It is a diversion. The, the, there is no meaning. Um, I feel I'm repeating myself and I'm not sure I'm, I'm helpful in any way. Um, but it's just looking into that because what Angela also said just before, that, that when you get into that moment, that being that you're in right now, there's an intimacy here that is beyond anything that science can explain or anything that we can think ourselves out of. There's a very, very pure heartfelt presence right now and if you if you are looking into that and keep detaching the thought and just staying with that contentment in the moment where it's just that pure moment right now from there you will act in a way that is in alignment with with all of us with the planet and with kindness and with compassion, because it's it's coming from a heartfelt space that is not thought into a reality. Am I making any sense? Yeah, I hear you, Pernilla. I, I recognize that meaning is a heady yeah. thing, and yeah. that what you're pointing to is more the heart space, which I appreciate. Exactly, exactly. And then just look into what what is the advantage with you seeking meaning instead of staying with that heart space? What is the advantage? What is it you're avoiding to get in contact with? Because a lot of times, for example, my my favorite topic is talking about anger. Because we have that idea that, <laughs> excuse me, that anger is when we get angry and we throw things and all that. Underneath that, there's a level. And that level, because the fr throwing thing and all that is not the anger. Underneath that, there's a level where you have this feeling of, emotions is coming up and you need to defend yourself and you need to mark your territory but that's not anger either underneath that there's a feeling of um fear of you being um need need to need to protect yourself or, or need to there there's like this um feeling of shame um that you don't want to get in contact with there's a feeling of guilt that you don't want to get in contact with so there's something underneath that but even that is not anger because underneath that, there's a contraction in the body and there's a thought connected to that contraction. And it's the thought we are reacting to and saying this is anger. But those two are not even connected. So there's like a looking into and looking into and looking into, really going into and zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. And be an anthropologist. Don't have any judgment towards yourself when you look into the diversion of finding the meaning. Just be an anthropologist and experience what is happening. When you look underneath that, what is happening in the heart area that you say that, okay, it's a, it's a sensation in the heart where there's an intimacy. What happens when you stay with that? You might get a feeling of fear or anger, guilt and shame that is coming up and that you don't want to get in contact with, so you're diverting your attention. But even that is just a thought. If you go keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in, you will feel a contraction in your body and there's a thought attached to that contraction separate those two and then you will be with reality and that you can always manage it's never unmanageable no matter how much 
and anxiety or anger or whatever we feel, no matter how much it is, when we detach the thought and just stay with the moment right now in my body right now, what is happening in my body right now, you will feel that it's never a static experience. It's constantly moving. And that you you have you you can stay with that you can be with that it would not you will not you know die or you will not you know lose your mind or you will just stay with a sensory experience that is happening in the body. So, really, yeah, use the group here um, and look into that what the diversion about meaning actually is, because it's super interesting and you are here for a reason. I mean. You're brave enough to be here and read Angelo's book. Then you're you're quite a brave one. Yeah, I like that. I like the word diversion. Um, and I'll just say a, one one more thing about this. The mind is really good at like co-opting. This, this is just one of the things it does. The co-opting is a is a, is a nice term for it. I've kind of heard it in, in Buddhist settings or Zen settings, but it, it really does this and. Um, I, I often think back to something my teacher said, probably everyone here's heard, heard me say this, but I've, I'll repeat it a bunch more times. I'm sure it's just so good. And he said, ultimately, this is about living out of the innermost promptings of your tender and loving heart. Um, but without realization, you will think you're living out of the innermost promptings of your tender and loving heart, and you might be acting out of the outermost promptings of your deluded ego. So what he's saying is, if you ask probably anyone in history, the people who've done the worst kind of things, uh, if you were to ask them, in all honesty, what what their reasoning was behind it, they would probably have a good reason for it. They would they would could justify it. It made sense to them. They thought they were doing the right thing, probably in most almost all cases. They they thought that was the, what needed to happen or whatever it is. Right. The the mind just has all these different ways of justifying things. So one strange trick it does sometimes, and I find this. I'm not reducing what you're asking to this exactly. But I do find this category of questioning sometimes and it's like I might be talking to a group and I'll be pointing directly to, you know, your true nature is available right here and right now. Let's explore it. And then someone will say something like, well, yeah, but Adolf Hitler killed a bunch of people 80 years ago. And I'm like, do you you not see the disconnect between them? I'm telling you right now you can access your true nature and, you know, referring to something that has nothing to do with what we're talking about at all or like, you know, completely out of context. That's just the way the mind is, though. It use it'll use like extravagant things sometimes to just dodge what's happening right now or whatever, you know, mm. it'll, it'll use very abstract things. It's, it's almost like to make it absurd, it would be like saying, well, I mean, you know, that the, you know, the, the Milky Way galaxy is going to collide with the Andromeda galaxy in you know, 50 billion years. So who cares? Right. Like, yeah, but that's kind of not what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, again, it's not to minimize the the true issues we have in the conventional sense in the world. There are always going to be challenges in, in the conventional world, and there's no need to negate that. But it's not an either or thing. The mind is, can be very black and white. It's like, well, what about that? Well, what about it? You know, donate some money to it and, and you know, do do some work in that direction. And then the other many hours a day you have available, sit, go deep. You know what I mean? So so a lot of times this is just a, as as as, as she said, it's it's just a bit of a diversion sometimes. It has that flavor to it. So look into that. Just see. Oh, okay. Interesting. Does my mind pop up and, you know, give me a moral imperative or talk about meaning when when I start to feel some identity structure being threatened or that I'm at the border of an emotion or something? So something to look into. All right. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. I, like yeah. I just want to add to what Angela said yeah. that, that the that um it's exactly that that we we are we are very very often um, diverting with sitting in meetings like this and talking philosophy and we can we can divert and divert and talk about for 5 hours about the philosophical you know ins and outs of non duality and it's so not interesting at all what is really interesting in your is your experience how is it to be you right now how is it to be with that frustration of um uh, climate crisis and and all the things that are happening okay let's look into it let's look into it because whenever we we divert our attention and saying that there's something outside of me that is a problem it's really an indication to look inside you know we are just trying to divert from looking inside and that is it's such an invitation to just look inside so whenever any of your minds start to go philosophical about this and wanting to know the ins and outs of it Look into what you're diverting from. What is it that you're so afraid of looking into and being with and staying with and just, you know, 
keep reverting back to the experience and the experience and the experience um, because there is a reason why you're diverting. There's a re- it's much safer to be out there than than in here. And and in reality, that like I said, that nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. It's not dangerous at all. Nothing's going to change and it, everything will be different because it's just about dissolving the identification with the pseudo-reality. I love that term, pseudo-reality. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's do one more. Um, Nico. Hello, Angelo. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I like to ask about, so I've been feeling a lot like I want to die. Hello. I'm I'm with you. So I I've had this so many times, but I'm wondering: Do I miss something? Do I have to? I don't know. I don't know. Who's the one who wants to die? Who's who's that? You know. What happens when you feel into into your body, into whatever? place in your body feels the most compelling or you're most drawn to in this moment if you just let your attention flow into there just like oh like what like you pour water into a space can you do that see it's a tightness below the heart like a plate Mm -hmm. can you can you just keep feeling into it and see if you notice a plate or or even like a visual experience of your chest and your mind even that can kind of be a sort of thought and just let that, you know, fade a little bit and just return your attention to the sensations themselves. And let them be exactly what they are, however they are right now. Perfect. That's what what we're here for, is just feel if there's a center to the sensation, if there's edges... It feels cool and warm. It feels like it's dissolving that way. Yeah. Yeah. Just stay with the sensations. Just stay with the sensations. Let them flow however they need to flow. Let them move. Be still. Be large, small. Outside of description altogether. But just stay in contact. Can you find something in this in the contact itself that's just okay just to be like it is? It's okay to shake. Yep. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> just let it move through you. This is this is all just energy. It's just energy. Just let the energy move. It's okay. It knows what to do. Just let it move. You're safe. <laughs> Yep. Keep your attention in the body, in the sensations. Faith. It just wants to. It's just energy that wants to move. That's all it is. You didn't. <laughs> you're not. You're not guilty of anything. We learn. We learn energy management in not great ways from other people all the time. <laughs> but the energy knows how to move. The sensations know how to be just how they are. And you don't have to fix anything and you don't have to repair anything here at all. You're free to just feel, feel it. Oh. It's still there. Okay. Doesn't have to go away. Nothing has to go or come here. Sensations. There's a, there's a really deep intelligence to the sensations themselves. They know how they want to move. They know how they 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 know how they they feel naturally. It's just that we sometimes, without realizing it, we try to um, 
sort of suppress them or put them in a container or tell them no. But when we touch in, to, when you touch in actually to the, just the purity of sensation, you're saying yes to it because you're speaking its own language and its language isn't up here. It's not yes or no, or I want to live or die, or I have this past or future. That's not the language of sensation. The language of sensation is a sort of pure acceptance that's always already saying yes. It's already there. The yes is already there once you touch in. So, so just give yourself permission to feel this. Give the sensations permission to be exactly how they are. Uh, how does this feel compared to when we started? Like on a scale from one to ten? I don't know. It's yeah. better. Yeah. I think it's a five. Yeah, exactly. Well, how did you do that? I didn't do it. You did it. <laughs> but how did you I didn't do it. I'm that's the important How do I do this alone? Well Penella's gonna show you how she would suggest do it as well. Well this is just it's just the first time. You 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 can do this. You can keep doing this. The more you access that sensation and energy, exactly. Let you gotta let your body really trust your body to move how it needs to move. You can learn TRE, which is similar to this like a shaking sort of modality. You can learn it free. TRE is trauma releasing exercise. There are a lot of somatic modalities, but ultimately it's about trusting the sensations themselves and going right to where you just went. I do a uh, holotropic breath work I did for a year. Mm -hmm. It really helps with the body, especially around the belly. So I used to have so a lot of rage and it, yeah, it just has to be expressed. But this, uh, what we just did, it's been there and I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. And yet you did. But how did I do it? You, you, <laughs> you, you allowed, you allowed what was, you allowed what was. There's a really good question when you're there and you have that feeling of, uh, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to live. It's very rare that we want to die. We just don't want to live. You know, that what, what the pain that we're in or the suffering that we're experiencing, we don't want that anymore. So it's not so much that we want to leave the planet. It's just that we don't want that suffering anymore. If you can continue your life without the suffering, you would say, yes, please. So it's not about the dying, but the ego loves to put drama on the wall and saying like, I want to die. And when we do that, we completely move away from the moment. But what you just did was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was you allowing what happened. And a really good question is, can I be in a body that wants to die? Can I be in a body that has all this rage? Can I be in a body that is, has all these emotions? And it's either yes or no. Yes, I can be in a body. And then you do what you just did. You just allow whatever comes up to come up. Whatever happens, happens. One of the things I really love to do is to do shaking exercises where you you sit cross-legged and you breathe and you move over the axis of, of the pelvic floor with, with, with your breath and you move quicker and quicker. And then suddenly it's like there's an explosion in the body and you just shake everything out. You can stand up and shake the entire body or you can sit down and shake the entire body. And it's the same thing that is happening. It's just a, a release of a lot of energy that is tied into the body because we're trying to do well and do the right thing and we're in so much control. And all that is like a, a, a pressure cooker. And it just needs a release of, oh, and then it's out. And then you have that softness about, about you that you have right now because you allowed to be in a body where that was present. You allowed that to happen. And, and you can do that at any point. It's just about, can you be in a body where, where this is present? And as you said, it's either a yes or a no. If it's a yes, you are just with it. But if it's a no, because you might experience, no, I can't accept to be in a body with this much rage. I don't want to be so angry. I don't want to have all this rage. Okay. Can you be in a body where you can't accept the rage? Can you Can you allow what is, even though you don't want it? I, I already did all that, you know. 
I've been through years of purging because I couldn't, I had so much karma that I couldn't, um, I couldn't, there was no, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I have to do this. There was no choice, you know, like I had to go through because there was no other way just to go through. But but clearly you know what to do because it just happened. It just happened. You were not in control. You just allowed it to happen. And your body was shaking and, and all that was just released. All the energy was released. It was beautiful. Yeah, you have the capacity to do this and you can... You can um, I don't even want to say you can teach yourself because you don't really need to teach yourself, but you can encourage yourself to see that it's it is really in your capacity the only thing that gets in the way is a doubt that just says oh i don't know how or but but again you you can re-watch this and see how i led you through it you can you can practice this um uh you have access and it's really it's all purely in the sensations themselves when we don't conceptualize we don't add we don't analyze we don't categorize anything we just keep feeling keep feeling and this isn't about trying to stay there for like hours or it's not an amount of of years and work it's really the amount of depth and just surrender to the sensations themselves so and uh, yeah and then also remember that that a lot of what you a lot of what just happened to you right now you have no idea why, you have no idea where it comes from, you have no idea when it happened and all of that. And and you don't need to. There, there are so many things that we don't need to know. All we need to is just allow and allow and allow. And then whatever needs to be expressed will be expressed. And it's just like, like we talked about with, um, I think it was Brian that had that, that has the conviction that he's not an unemotional guy, you know, uh, mm-hmm. that's his belief that he has. Um, and and that just allowing whatever comes up at the moment is just being expressed. And then you you might not know what the shaking is about or when it happened and a trauma when I was five and all that. You don't need to go into any of that. It's just right now, you just stay with whatever comes to the surface. And can you be in a body where this comes to the surface? Clearly, yes, you can. And if you have the no, I can't, this is too much, this is too much, then can you be in a body where this is too much? Yes, you, you you just were. I've been struggling with this for this just this area for so long. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You did. And under all the all the oh, I want to die. It's like I don't want to live. Now it's coming, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because if this, if, if this is what you're trying to avoid, then clearly it is doable. You know, it's it doable. Avoid it. I'm yeah. happy when it comes, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, it's so exciting. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. It's tough to do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love how, how, I love your smile. Thank you. You know how to do this. You totally know how to do this. I can see it. <laughs> you know what I love? I feel God laughs through me. That's so nice. Okay, enjoy your day. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You're so welcome. It's so great. <laughs> You're very welcome. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for your questions, your vulnerability, honesty, um, all of it. It's been a blast. Panoa, thank you so much. It's been wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. It's a beautiful, wow. beautiful group you have here. Yeah. Beautiful group. How, how can they find your, your stuff now? Your channel's called? Um, yeah, nonduality.uk. Uh, either it's my name, demore.uk, and then I have all the videos in there, or you can search for the Awakening Curriculum. I am, I'm going through all the 10 feathers. We are just finishing the third feather right now, uh, and it's it's available for everyone. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Beautiful group you got here. Yeah. Really, really beautiful people. So wonderful. Thank you for today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Bye, Sanjal. Thanks, Perla. Bye.
Thanks, Thank Angelo. You. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Angelo. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.